Welcome back. So today Apple released a new software update for the iPhones. And if you have a Mac, you also got a new update. So right here, if we go into our system preferences, just to show you the new software update that we have, go into general and software update. You can see there is a software update that's available. But if you were testing the Mac OS 26 developer betas, you're going to come up to 26.1 uh, beta. But if you want to go to a stable version which has been officially released that's not on beta you'd have to go into your uh, beta updates right here click on the little info tab and then go to where it says developer and switch off this developer and click done after that the system is just gonna refresh quickly and you will see that it will still find a new software update and this one is the one that we care for or we want and right here you can see if I click on the software update page it's now found Mac OS 26.0.1. This one is available to all devices that support Mac OS 26. So if you got the initial 26.0, you're going to get this. And for me on my M1 Pro MacBook Pro, it comes in at a massive 13.54 gigs. Just to keep you in the loop, this is not all that Apple released today. You can see when it comes to double pointed software updates, they actually released pretty much updates for watchOS, Vision OS, TV OS, Mac OS, iPad OS, and iOS 26.0.1. Most of these updates I do cover here on the channel at Half Men Half Tech. So if you want to keep up to date, definitely to subscribe so that you don't miss out. Now what I'm going to do is update my Mac and then we're gonna look at the new changes that this new software update has to offer. Just like that, my Mac has now been updated to Mac OS Tahoe 26.0.1. And now if we go into the system settings, this is the first time that I'm opening this. You can see the app icons actually loaded up pretty good, but on this side, you do see that they are taking a little bit of time for the icons to load. But looking at the new software changes, that we have right here if we go into the storage and then go to the about info when it comes to mac os give it a few seconds you can see mac os itself is taking about 24.29 gigs and if i click on the info tab right there apple intelligence is 12.69 gigs it increased by maybe 100 megabytes if i remember correctly and the new build number that we have with mac os 26.0.1 you can see it right there 25 alpha 362 so that should be the current latest build number that you should see once you update to this new version according to the release page of this update they mentioned that it provides important security fixes so there is a ton of bug fixes and the other thing is security updates so the first thing they mentioned is um, bug fixes and the first bug fix that's here is one that prevented some users from upgrading to Mac OS Tahoe who had the Mac Studio M3 Ultra 2025. So if you had an M3 Ultra Mac Studio and you couldn't upgrade to Mac OS 26, after this update drops, we of which it's now available to download over the air, you should be able to download it to your M3 Ultra Mac Studio. This is just a Mac mini and it's just, you know, for reference. Another thing that has also been released alongside this update is new security pages. So I do have a bookmark of the new Apple security releases that were released right here. And you can see alongside iOS and other releases, we also have a security release for Mac with the whole 26.0.1. Looking at the information contained right here, you can see they do mention one uh, CVE entry or security vulnerability and exposure, and it has to do with found parser and it's available for mac os the whole it says impact processing a malicious crafted font may lead to unexpected app termination or corrupt process memory and the description is an out of bounds right issue was addressed with improved bounds checking and in case if you're wondering what this font PESA is it's pretty much a system background component that's responsible for processing font files and it's part of mac os core text it resolves validates and extracts data from different fonts and cases where you see this run if you go to your cpu usage or activity monitor is when you are opening or rendering um documents that have custom fonts so you'll be able to see this font text or core text be in the cpu memory usage and 
If you notice from my previous videos with Mac OS 26.0, I had issues with indexing and this won't fix that because it's uh, a different issue, but you do see that my Mac is still indexing and I actually gave it some time for it to settle in the background and do a couple things. I haven't yet cleared my catch memory and after this update in this video, that's the next thing that I would do. But another thing I wanted to highlight is CPU usage since that was an issue with the previous Mac OS 26.0. Currently after the update, just to show you some of the things that are using the most um, CPU you you can see the first one is this uvca assistant and the next one is uh the kernel task this one is using uh around about 138 percent and you have the windows server right there with 89 percent and pretty much that's all i don't see anything that has to do with cortex or anything about font for now but as the system settles in the background, these values would decrease over time. And if the issue with like the top two persists, or actually the top three, because it's quite significant, Ecamm Live makes sense because this is what I'm using to record this video. But you get an idea of what's using the most CPU right here. And if we go to the memory, you can see how the memory is being used. Windows Server is actually using a significant amount of memory, 1.2 gigs. And this is uh, 16 gig uh, RAM or 16 gig memory on this computer. Another thing that was released alongside this is new video format. So I'm up to date, but you do see software updates available. And I do have the betas off. So I'm not seeing uh, Mac OS 26.1, the beta that has just been released a few days ago. This one has to do with new video formats. So if we give this some time, you can see pro video formats. And if we click on the info tab right here, it should tell us more info. But if we click on this highlight text, it opens the web page, which tells us about updates to uh, update Mac OS on Mac. And it really doesn't tell us much about this new pro video formats. But if we're to go here and say, in update now won't let me click the update now so for now i'll just quit the system settings and then go back to the software update page and usually after doing this it works so there is an issue with that and even with when i was updating to mac os 26.0.1 this issue was there so now if i click on the update now you can see it shows up right there and it's stalling the update so if you do experience something similar you can basically just close your system settings and retry again and it will install the latest pro video formats and if you got the new iphones it's gonna make it work smoother with the footage that you are going to be recording on these devices and edit within your editing software like final cut pro let's talk about some of the issues that we're here with mac os 26.0 that have been resolved and some which are still existing it seems after closing the system settings it loads the app icons much better and this is despite the fact that I haven't yet cleared my memory. So right here, you can see if I go to uh, Mac OS, it should show the memory and system data. Pretty much it's fluctuating a little bit, but 234 gigs round about that as it goes up and down depending on usage and most of those are system files and i believe some of my uh, catches that i was doing in final cut eventually does come down but i'll try and clear it to see if this improves but i can tell there's a much improvement to the rendering when it comes to the app icons before with mac os 26.0 or even if i would close system settings and reopen you would see question marks even when i would go into sub menus after reopening it multiple times so that seems to be fixed another thing that seems to have been improved slightly has to do with the display so if you use an external monitor of which i use multiple this is one of my external displays there was an issue where external monitors wouldn't load properly but after the update it's working properly unfortunately when it comes to safari the compact um, tabs haven't yet been brought back and if you go into the safari settings and you go to the tab section this is not something you will see keep pushing for this eventually i believe apple might bring this back there was also an issue with the airpods pro 3 at least for me in my experience when i was connecting a mac that was on mac os 26.0 paired with the new airpods pro 3 where there would be a little bit of crackling 
like in audio when I would skip from one song to another but after the update I tested the new AirPods Pro 3 and I'm happy to say that these are now working as intended so that's good that way another thing that's still existing is an issue that has to do with uh, the dock sometimes the dock will automatically just hide itself or it will unhide itself when you want it not to show like for example when you are looking at a new screensaver which you don't want the dog to show but that's an issue at this uh, point in time the indexing issue is still existing but it's much better and it indexes much faster compared to mac os 26.0 and windows server cpu consumption seems to have been brought down a little bit compared to mac os 26.0 I did Geekbench 6 scores just to see how this compares with macOS 26.0 and you can see the scores that I got on macOS 26.0.1 comparing this with macOS 26.0 right here you can see them side by side so for single core I, this, these are the results that I got right there. You can see my device right there on um, uh, macOS 26.0. Uh, oh, I got 2390 but then on this version 26.0.1 I got 2366 if we go to the multi core score you can see the results right here so on macOS 26.0.1 uh, I got 10152 and then here I got 10932 keep in mind that I did these readings right after my Mac rebooted so the probably were some system files still settling in the background and the activity monitor still showed that yes there were some devices and some processes that were using a fair amount of activity um, in the background but after this you can see the memory how it looks and if we go to the uh, activity you do still have the kernel that's now on top and you have the uvc assistant which is still up top so i'll keep an eye on this but other than that that's how this update has been for me in case if you're wondering what's next for mac os as you can see mac os 26.1 has been in beta uh, beta 1 since september 22 and today september 29 so almost a week now and it's actually today is exactly one week since it's been in beta so we are expecting beta 2 pretty soon and when that comes out i um, might make a video right here on the channel depending on the changes that are there but other than that that's it for me when it comes to this update if you have the m3 mac studio you can now finally update comfortably and you get a glimpse of what apple has resolved and some of the security fixes that are here so that's it for me for now uh let me know what you think about this video if you like it leave a like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one peace